Welcome to episode 58 of the Arctic Crafts podcast. My name is Bente and I'm coming to you from Vesterål, northern Norway, where I live with my husband and three cats. You can find me on Instagram as Arctic Crafts, on Facebook and Etsy as Arctic Crafts by Bente, and on Ravelry as Arctic Crafts 65. And I also have a group on Ravelry the Arctic Crafts podcast group, where you can join in with make-alongs and potential giveaways. And in that group, there is also an Ask Me Anything thread. So if there's something you would like to know, I'd either answer the question in the Ravelry thread, or if I find that the question might interest more of you, I'll do it on the podcast. First of all, I want to thank you for all the nice comments on the bonus episode I uploaded a couple of days ago with uh, where I was introducing Hobby. Uh, We had fun doing it and it looks like you had fun watching it. And if you haven't seen it yet, it's you can find it on my channel. And um, now that he's been on the podcast, I think he's going to be more active in front of the camera, at least when I'm vlogging. Uh, There won't be a lot of vlogging this summer, but I know I'm going to record uh, in the market the second uh, weekend of July. Uh, How much depends on how busy I get. Let's hope I'm really busy. Um, But my son will be there and my husband will also be there, so we could also not, I don't have to record all of the time. Hopefully they can take some pictures and do some recording as well. Uh, and um, speaking of my son, he is coming here tomorrow. So this is being recorded on Wednesday and uploaded on Friday. And that means that the Arctic Summer of Socks, the prices for June, is being drawn tomorrow. So I can't tell you any winners even though I did it yesterday. This is confusing. Uh, I hopefully I won't have to do this a lot of times, recording a couple of days early. But anyways, when you see this, you already know, know who won the first two prizes for the Arctic Summer of Socks. And speaking of prizes, there will actually be three prizes, both in June and July, because Inga of uh, Knitting Traditions has donated two knitting patterns that will be uh, awarded to one person on Instagram in June and the other in July. And the hashtag is Arctic Summer of Socks Mal. That's the hashtag on Instagram. Uh, there will be a pattern price in August as well. And if I don't have a donation for a pattern, I'll donate it myself. So that's the admin, I think. Uh, I can't think of anything else. Uh, So uh, uh, the only thing I can tell you while we're talking about make-alongs, I have decided to do, I'm going to run make-alongs for the rest of the year because I really love doing make-alongs. I can't tell you anything about how many prices, what prices and so on. And if you're a maker watching this, I really love to be able to uh, donate. Uh, prices that aren't made by me. I can donate my own yarn, but it's so much fun donating prices from other makers as well. And the next make along is going to start September 1st, immediately after Arctic Summer of Socks finishes, and it's going to run to the end of October, and it's the Spooky Mal. And after that, I'll be doing a gift mass mal from the start of November and to the end of the year. So uh, just so you know, there are going to be more make-alongs on the Arctic Crafts podcast. And I'm also, I have passed 900 subscribers. And I can promise you that when I reach a thousand subscribers, there will be a big giveaway on the podcast. 
Hubby and plugged me on the bonus episode. Uh, he promised he would take me out on a date when I reached a thousand subscribers. So, uh, help me out here. <laughs> no, uh, seriously, uh, one of the reasons why I'm so anxious to reach a thousand subscribers is that Etsy has started putting ad ads on everything. And the only reason to prevent them putting ads wherever they want in your videos. I'm not sure they put ads in my because I'm I probably have too few views for them to be interested. But anyway, when I reach a thousand subscribers, I can monetize my channel, and I would only do that because they, you you don't you you don't earn any money on it unless you have a million subscribers. But you get to tell them where you want the ads to be, and if people should be able to skip them or not. And then I could prevent ads being put in the middle of my podcasts. I can put everything at the start or at the end and make them skippable. So that's the re one of the reasons why I'm so anxious to reach a thousand subscribers. Besides, I think you have to have at least a thousand subscribers to do live. At least I think so. And that turned into quite a rant and a tangent. And we are here to talk about knitting. So let's talk about knitting. And uh, you can see I'm not wearing any knitting and that's basically because it's too warm to be wearing knitting. You won't be seeing me wearing knitting now for a couple of months, I think, maybe three months. Because uh, August and start of September are really hot here. So uh, let's see, starting with the only FO I have, and it's my Lydia top. This is it in all its glory. Uh, I've forgotten the name of the designer, but it will be at the bottom of the screen. And this is the back. It's got a V neck at the back. And I've knit this in Viking Björk. And it's the old, the old Björk because they have changed, um, changed uh, uh, fibers in uh, Björk. So no, it's bamboo. Among other things, there's bamboo in it. And this is 90% cotton, 10% merino. And I, I did, I knit the back from the armholes up three times, I think, because I couldn't make anything work. And it's probably me and not the pattern. But anyways, I really struggled with this. So when I was finally finished with it, I hated it with a passion. And then I tried it on and discovered two things. One, this color doesn't suit me. Two, it's too big. Even though I uh, I had I met Gage at the start, so either I'm a bit pessimistic when it comes to how big I actually am, or I don't know what happened, but it's too big for me anyway. The armholes are too wide and the V is too deep. Anyways, so uh, I decided at once that okay. So this isn't for me and I wouldn't wear it if it suited me because I really struggled knitting it. But my Norwegian bestie Trine is willing to take this off my hands. So this is going in the mail and the sooner I get it out of the house, the better. So Trine, she always watches my podcast, Trine, this is for you and it's and I'm also going to send her the blanket I finished months ago that was supposed to go to her as soon as it was finished, but I never sent it. So that's my only FO. I've, uh, I have done a bit of knitting, but that's the only thing I finished. Uh, among other things, because I've been quite a monogamous on that, because I was really struggling and I knew that if I put this away, I'll never pick it up again. So I just persevered to get it finished. So that's my only FO. I do have a hole. I have finished a sock. 
And where did I put it? It's here. You've seen this as a whip. So this first sock is finished and this is the cozy knitter in the colorway Hygge. And uh, I started the second sock. And it's here. This is the second sock. And as you can see, there's the progress keeper, the bowl of poutine that my Canadian bestie Sue sent me because I love anything Canadian. Uh, and this also came from Sue. And I love this contraption. Uh, it's, uh, as you can see, it's perfect for yarn balls. It would work for cakes as well, but especially yarn balls. And whenever I knit with self-striping, which I do all the time, I always wind up the yarn in gobstopper balls. And when I'm finished for the day and don't want to knit anymore, I just remove the top, like so, and I put the sock in here with the yarn and put the top back on and secure it with this one. So now this can stand on the table and no cats can get to it. So that's what that was brilliant. So thank you Sue for that one. I'm going to use that a lot because I always have a pair of socks on the needles. And uh, I have another hole and I knit this in an evening because I wanted to have it finished for the podcast. Uh, it's a shorty and it's knit with uh, Kate Celine. I don't know if you remember my V-back tee that I knit with a mini set from uh, Beehive Yarns. I didn't have quite enough yarn so I had to uh, use a different skein for the bottom of the sweater and this is the closest I got from my stash. And it's Kate Celine and I decided to knit shorties with the leftovers. And the reason why I rushed to do this, to make this before the podcast is that somebody asked me how I knit shorties that stayed up because these shorties stay up. They don't slide down your heel, even though there's only a rib and then straight into the heel. And the secret behind this is uh, I knit the, these on 2.25. That's my uh, that's my uh, the, my preferred needle for socks, fingering sock yarn, 2.25 and 64 stitches. But on these, I start with t uh, 10 uh, rows of uh, ribbing on a 2.25 needle. Sorry, on a two millimeter needle, not 2.25. I knit the sock on 2.25 and I knit the ribbing on a 2 millimeter needle. That makes it, it tighter. And then I switch to the 2.25 millimeter needle and I knit one round stocking stitch and then I go straight into the heel. And it's a heel flap and gusset. Uh, and that's one of the things I have discovered that if I want to knit ankle socks this short, I have to use a heel flap and gusset because that's more rigid and it stays put. And I use the heel flap and gusset heel from Hermione's Everyday Socks. That's a free pattern. And I love the garter edge. It's so easy to pick up needles and not get, get any gaps afterwards. So that's my preferred heel flap and gus gusset. And these stay put. So I, have, I haven't started the second sock yet but I want to finish this because this is my this is what I wear in summer in the house. I wear shorty socks, wool shorty socks. Unless it's really hot then I don't wear socks at all. But I really love my wool shorties and I've worn through a couple of them so I need I need more. So that's a whip. And then I have a really big whip. It's, it's, it's really, really big. And I'm of course in the middle of a row. That seems to be my preferred way of doing this. Uh, this is 
another blanket. Uh, I'm on a blanket. I'm kind of obsessed by blankets these days. Uh, this is The Big Mal by Hedgehog Fibers. And that's a free pattern on their website. And this is really eating up my leftovers. Because I'm knitting these, this with five strands of fingering held together on 10 millimeter needles. And I have some DK I want to use up as well. And what I do then, I replace two of the fingering uh, weight strands with a DK strand. And I'm holding one strand of white or undyed with the, the rest of the yarn all along the blanket because I want it to be a bit cohesive. So the only thing I can imagine if I run out of white yarn I would have to buy more yarn, but then I just uh, use undyed. So what I the pattern is for a square blanket, but I I wanted it to be rectangular because it's more it's basically more practical. So when I decided it was wide enough, I started decreasing on one end to make it rectangular. Because to begin with, you increase on both sides, and when you decide you want to make it rectangular, you just start decreasing on one side, and you keep increasing on the other. And then you decide when it's long enough, you decrease on both sides again. Or decrease on both sides. You, you Again? You haven't done that before. So you start decreasing on both sides. And because this is so thick and warm, I'm not sure I will be working a lot on this this summer. So it's in a basket with all my leftovers and I keep finding new leftovers. So, uh, and if I should run out of leftovers, which I doubt, I'll have to put this aside uh, until I have more leftovers. My, uh, my hand dyes, won't be going into this. This is made up of commercial yarn and my own hand dyed from before I opened the shop because I have quite a lot of that lying around. So I'm using that and commercial in this. My hand dyed leftovers or scraps will be going into my jelly roll blanket. I'm not showing you that today because I haven't done, worked on it at all. So that's and then I have one more whip and that whip starts with uh, me frogging something. Uh, I, uh, you've seen me knitting on the Ripple Lake cardigan by Hohi Locatelli and it's an all over lace short sleeved cardigan. And I, it's knit sideways, you knit first the left panel and then you knit the right panel. And I was, I finished the left panel and I was this far uh, along on the right panel and I didn't work on it at all. I couldn't seem to work on it. So I figured maybe I should just frog it and use the yarn for something else. And finally last night I picked up the courage and frogged the Ripple Lake. So this morning I cast on something else with the yarn something that's a quick knit that I might have finished until I probably will have finished before next weekend so I can wear this on the in the market if the weather isn't if it's a bit chilly so I started the ranunculus with the yarn instead and this is the yarn uh, the colorway is tidal wave so you can see this yarn has been frogged, knitted and then frogged because it's kind of, what you call this? Yeah, you can tell it has been knitted once before. So I started the ranunculus and I've started the pattern in the yoke. And the, I knit three ranunculus already. And I basically knit a ranunculus in two or three days, depending on how much knitting I get done. So I should have this done by next weekend. I have um, I have something else in mind to wear if it gets warm. Then I won't be wearing any knitting. I can assure you that. I will be wearing a dress I bought 
several years ago that I couldn't wear last summer because of adding a few pounds but now the pounds are gone again that dress looks good on me so I'm going to wear that and you you're not interested in hearing what dress I'm going to wear at the market here's me without show notes just ranting on so uh, but that's that's all my knitting because uh, the rest of my whips are hibernating. I have been uh, doing a lot of knitting on a few projects. I have several more pairs of socks on the needles that I haven't touched. So that blanket was really, it was so much fun that I knit only on that for a couple of days. So uh, that's what I have for knitting. And uh, now I'm going to start talking about how spoiled I am because uh, Sue keeps sending me stuff and uh, I can start by showing you what new stuff has arrived that I have uh, gotten myself and I actually got a, got a few things myself as well it's not all gifted uh, I went to a yarn store to get a longer set of 10 millimeter needles uh, not my lo local yarn store but the yarn store in the next town over and I was only going to get knitting needles but then she had a yarn on sale that I never tried and it's this one it's from uh, the store alpaca Directly translated, that means the great alpaca. But we have this uh, saying in Norway, the store alpaca, which means kind of, oh, you use it instead of, oh my God, you say the store alpaca. So that's why they call themselves store alpaca. And as you can tell, there's alpaca in this yarn. There's 40% uh, alpaca, 40% merino, and 20% nylon. And it's called mini stark which means mini strong and the mini bit is that it's fingering i guess uh, it's a 50 gram skein and it has 166 meters so it's it's more it's kind of a light sport heavy fingering and it's so nice and soft and i got two i got two balls because i need one for each each sock if i need a pair of socks with this I might use it for something else because of the barber pulling, but I think this is going to become socks. I could knit a pair of patterned socks in this, I think, if it's not too busy, because it's, even though it's barber pulling, it's kind of a tonal. So we'll see. But uh, I can never go, I probably, I'm not the only one that goes into a yarn store to buy needles and nothing else and comes out with the needles plus some yarn. I doubt it. And I got my uh, last uh, skein of my three-month club with Nicole C. Mendes, the Harry Potter club, and it's called Bombarda. And it's really fun. It's got a lot of bright colors. So this I'm looking forward to knitting up. And I'm not sure, am I the only one that thinks this is kind of Christmassy? I'm, I'm seriously considering using this for Christmas socks. We'll see. It's, it's got reds and golds and greys. So I'm, I'm not sure. And then I got some yarn for me and for Sue because I had to try this out. It's again from uh, Hobby. And it's a single ply. And it's got these uh, long color, color changes. And uh, I, because I saw this shawl knit with this kind of yarn, you knit uh, one triangle with one color and then you pick up alongside on the side, one of the sides and you knit another triangle in a different color, but also a color changing one. And it was really beautiful. So I bought two different colors that, 
works together. But again, this can also be used as a contrast color in a stranded color work on the sweater. I can use them in a shifty project. So I'll see. And I bought two skeins for two balls for Sue as well. And for those of you who know Sue, my color choices shouldn't surprise you. I had her look at this by the way, so she knows what colors she's getting, so I can show this on the, on the podcast. Uh, this is, again, neon, neon greens, and this camera doesn't work. The colors on this look pretty much like they do in real life. This is more of a neon green, lime green, doesn't look like that on camera. But again, so those are the ones I got for Sue. And now we're going into what arrived in the mail. And we'll start with something that that uh, Sue got for me. Let's see if I find the... Uh, ah, there it is. I just had to uh, figure out where things were. Uh, she got some... Uh, Mohair silk on sale, and if you know, that was Severus Snape by the way, as if you didn't uh, realize. Uh, this is from the, from Comfy Cozy Knits, and uh, she saw this on sale, and she immediately thought of me. And I actually have a project in mind for this, because I had... I had four skeins of Maison on Natural Boo and uh, Natural Boo doesn't sell for some reason so I stopped uh, dyeing this a long time ago and I still had a few and I had one sweater quantity left and I'm thinking holding those two together for a no frills so that's my plan with this mohair and uh, so that's something from Sue and something from me and uh, by the way while I remember it uh, I'm going I'm going to play around this summer because I'm uh, I'm going to dye some yarn but I'm going to try four different new things uh, I have gotten some Suri silk cloud that I'm going to try dyeing on I've gotten some uh, Sock blanks that I'm going to try dyeing on. I got some of the zebra, zebra yarn, zebra yarn. Uh, that's so popular at the moment. The one with the black barber polling that shows up here and there on the yarn. And I'm also going to try self-striping this summer. So um, keep your eyes open in my shop for different because I want to do some fun stuff. Sorry, I bumped the microphone. I want to do some fun stuff this summer and um, some of it might end up in the shop, some of it might not. Uh, some of it might be just the one I just sell what I have and then never do it again. And some might be permanent. So uh, let's keep on going with the stuff I got from Sue. I got some more yarn from her. She bought this for herself, but when she got the yarn in the mail, she thought she could see a pink hue in this yarn. I don't, but she was convinced she saw it looked pink, and then she sent it to me. And it's a yarn I wanted to, to work with as long as I can remember, ever since I heard about it. And it's... Roots and Rain. I think the first time I heard about this yarn was on Kate from Holton Cottage Cast on her podcast. And it's a naturally hand dyed. And it's a Canadian yarn. And she calls this Field Sock. It's a sport weight and it's 80% Corydale, Dorset and Suffolk and 20% Nylon. And it's really woolly or rustic as some of you might say but it's a sweater quantity 
because there's uh, 430 yards in one skein. So I should be able to get the sweater out of these four skeins. I haven't decided yet what I'm going to knit with it, but I'm not going to start knitting with this yarn until the fall anyway, because it, this is going to be really warm to work with. I can feel it. And it's not, it's not next to skin for me, this kind of yarn. It's a bit too itchy to have next to skin. So it needs to be something, a layering piece. So I haven't decided yet, but I'm thinking some kind of patterned sweater or maybe just uh, another no frills, maybe a uh, Hanna of uh, Conroe Craft has just finished a, what she calls a no faded. It's a so faded with only one color. And uh, I could use that for a no faded. But again, the um, so faded, what I love about that is that it fits me really nicely. That's why I have knit two of them. And that's the kind of sweater that I maybe want to wear next to skin. Isabel Kramer also has lots of sweaters that I really love that I can knit with that yarn. But that's for another time. So let's keep going with the stuff from Sue. Again, she did a bag de stash. And because this has maple leaves, beavers and Canada on it, she sent it to me. Um, uh, it's made by yarn friendly and she also sent me uh, one of these bags by awesome granny it says and I wanted to have that on the bag so that's on the back and it won't focus because I have my face in the way anyway it says bags by awesome granny and another this dash bag, anything Canadian and anything with also. So I'm not sure who made this. For all I know, it's Sue. She used to make bags. She still makes bags, but she doesn't sell bags anymore. And she also sent me a, a really fun yarn koozie or uh, yarn condom as Chevis calls them with uh, rainbow sheep on it so uh, that was fun and she also sent me two notion pouches uh, I might give one of them away but I might keep both of them I'm not sure probably going to keep both of them and there's a lot of tiny bits and pieces in here there's uh, scissors and there's uh, uh, I think this is to put at the end of the DPNs if you need socks probably and again with the owls Lots of owls. There was a different, there was an, another owl, but that's on a project. That was a progress keeper. So Sue keeps spoiling me. But then again, um, there, goes, uh, there goes some stuff the other way as well. And I bought, I bought something because um, I'm not sure if you remember uh, something really popular. It's the uh, British sheep breeds poster that everybody, uh, lots of podcasters has shown, uh, I think. Uh, and it's made by this lady. Her name is uh, Katie Green. And she, uh, you can, uh, she has a podcast, The Green Bean. And I love her podcast. So uh, I really recommend that podcast. And she 
She's an illustrator and a knitter and she has made this this card is by her and her podcast she also shows her drawing not only knitting and then it turns out that Katie Green was the one making this illustration I'm going to open this and show you this is it in a tea towel and I bet you have seen this before in probably as a poster and I just had to have this I'm going to hang this in the kitchen I'm going to iron it and I'm going to hang it on the wall I'm not going to use it as a tea towel because it's too pretty but that was my plan all along to put it up on the kitchen wall I have the perfect place to put it so now that I've shown it to you I can put it up on the wall so just iron it and put it up so that was the tea towel and that's actually what I have for show and tell um, apart from my own yarn of course but I have I haven't almost I haven't done almost any dyeing because I've been uh, just putting away everything because I have had a lot of other stuff to do and it's been real quiet in the shop so there hasn't been a lot and it hasn't been a lot of uh, this hasn't been so much how do I put this it hasn't been any uh, reason for me to dye a whole lot of yarn because okay so I'm going to the market next weekend but it's been real quiet in the shop so I have loads of inventory so no panic dyeing I basically spent my time preparing for the market instead I've gotten what I need to uh, uh, display the yarn I bought a grid ball last year that I never got to use because uh, everything was cancelled so I did a trial run on the decking just so I could figure out how to put it up because I was imagining me standing there in Melbu uh, not having the right sort of tools to put it up and then it turns out it was done in five minutes I need somebody to be with me to help me hold it while I secure it but that's about it so that's what I've been spending my time on I've been preparing for the market and today I got everything I need for the advents for packaging the advents so the only thing missing now is the yarn so I'll start dyeing the yarn when my son goes back in four weeks so I'll start dyeing the advent calendar yarn in August and it will be shipped out at the end of September so then I have one more thing to show you uh, the first thing I'm going to show you is that I have given my yarn labels a much needed makeover this is how they now look these are my new yarn labels as you can see the the text um, line at the bottom isn't there anymore they're kind of broader and they're kind of more playful so uh, the next thing I'm going to try to do is to uh, get uh, recycled paper for them in this this weight of paper because I do these myself on a printer because getting them uh, printed is too expensive to be honest with you I haven't got the finances for that yet maybe later if I uh, make more money but for the time being I have to do all of this myself on a printer so uh, I was playing around with it but since I'm uh, my uh, profession is uh, typographer and graphic designer I love doing things like this it almost feels like the old days so uh, that was my new yarn labels and I've only dyed up two colors for my next for so it's I'm going to put this in the shop on Sunday but there's only two different colorways it's the kaleidoscope on BFL sock 
and Grape Fizz. I think this is also a BFL sock. It feels like it. I, it's, it, it's been a few days since I dyed up this, so I, it's in my notebook what kind of base it is. But Kaleidoscope and Grape Fizz. And that's the only thing that's going into the shop, because I, I dyed up a uh, uh, sweater quantity of Stracciatella, that's, this is it, uh, four skeins of this, and I dyed up some Grab Your Drank, but I put that in the shop uh, as soon as it was dry, because uh, people were asking for it. It still hasn't sold though, so if you want the sweater quantity of my newest colorway, the Stracciatella, it's in my shop now. Same with Grab Your Drank. So um, that's it for this time. I have stuff to do, uh, not places to be, but I have stuff to do. Uh, Hobby was going to um, fetch my mail for me today. Uh, I got uh, I got a message that uh, there were two packages waiting for me at the post office, and he could only pick up one of them because the other one. I had to pay to get out because it was some dye from the US and then I have to pay VAT on it when I pick it up. But normally you get told if you have to pay for it. But this time it just said come pick this up. So I'm not picking up the dyes until tomorrow. But that doesn't matter because I'm not dyeing yarn this week, probably. I'm going to maybe dye some yarn next week. Just for fun. And then I might take it to, with me to the festival, let's see. Uh, but um, I'm really excited about the sock blanks because that looks like so much fun. So, um, and, uh, and I've always said I was never going to sell mohair, but I really like, I really like the fluff. And Sue sent me a skein of Surrey Silk Cloud that was also from, I've shown you that before was also from Comfy Cozy Knits, I think. And that was Suri Silk Cloud. And it was so soft and I thought, okay. So one of my suppliers had both Suri Silk Cloud, Zebra yarn. Do you say Zebra or Zebra? I know, uh, I think uh, the Americans say uh, Zebra and the English say Zebra or is it the other way around? Anyway, uh, they had that and they had sock blanks. So I was thinking, Okay, what's one more thing I wanted to try? Self-striping. And they actually had skeins made for self-striping as well. They're six, six meters in circumference. So that's, that's, not on, that's only a three striper. So I'm only going to dye three stripers. But because in theory, I think I can, I can manage dyeing self-striping. In theory. So uh, let's see if I actually may manage it. Worst case scenario, I have uh, loads of yarn from a blanket. <laughs> Worst case scenario. Or I could just skein them up in a normal skein and dye them with other things because it's a normal merino sock yarn. But I'm going to try self-striping and my youngest son thought that sounded really interesting. So I'm not sure. We don't have a lot of space and a six meter skein. I need lots of space to both prepare for the dyeing. And while I'm dyeing, I need a lot of space around me. I need a lot of sp space when it's dry and I'm going to skein it up. So I'm not sure. Maybe I should wait until I am alone dyeing up self-striping. We'll see. So that's my plans for the summer. I'm going to play around dyeing different bases that I haven't tried before. And it will show up. If I'm satisfied with it, if I like it, I'll put it in the shop. I know the zebra yarn is going to end up in the shop. Uh, and let's hope I'm not too late to jump on that wagon. Because I know it's, it's a trend probably and it's going to disappear. Uh, I was, uh, I've was i been too late for, on trends before. So hopefully I'm not too late on this one. So I'm going to dye up some zebra yarn. And uh, I'm not going to keep on talking. I've already I've started recording this two times, and hopefully, I've said this. I haven't said the. I haven't forgotten anything because I think I've talked about it, and then I talked about it in one of the first takes I did. So, uh, 
I hope you have a really nice weekend and I'll uh, be back in two weeks and maybe I'll post a little vlog before then but if I do I'll make sure to post about it on Instagram so uh, if you follow me on Instagram and or subscribe if you subscribe and uh, click on the notifications bell on this uh, channel you also get the notification in YouTube when I post something new whether it's a podcast or anything else so they might show up some short videos I recently discovered that my uh, camera phone actually I can edit videos and upload them to YouTube from my phone so that makes it easier to put up short vlogs so I might try that sometime this summer anyway I'm going to stop now so hobby can come back into the house he's been oh my goodness Zebra Snape has yeah Zebra Snape is just wanting to tell you that he's here and before he turns completely crazy I'm going to stop waffling yep. Zebra Snape is in the house I'll see you in two weeks until then I hope you have a really nice time bye bye